Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. Hello, it's Emmy. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about cast iron skillets. Well, it's not just skillets, but just cast iron cookware. Because I use a lot of cast iron in my cooking videos, many of you have asked what I do to take care of them. The way cast iron works is that you create a finish on your pan. They also call it patina. They also call it seasoning. Basically, you apply a fat to the surface of the cast iron and bring it up to temperature, and it creates a kind of seal or coating on the surface of the metal. That's important for a couple reasons. Number one, iron rusts. So if you put water and iron together and it dries out, it will rust. So you need a layer or a sealant to keep it from rusting. Also, number two is Seasoning the pan creates a non-stick surface. Sometimes even with seasoning, food does stick, but it won't stick as violently if it wasn't properly seasoned. Now let me talk a little bit about how I take care of my pans. Now, say I'm cooking and now I want to clean my pan. What do I do? I do not use soap. Soap will remove any of your seasoning. I use water and a scrub brush. So say I'm making breakfast and I have some scrambled eggs and there's a particularly stubborn bit of scrambled egg on there. What I do is while my pan is hot, I use my scrub brush and I get that wet and I scrub it on the inside of my pan. Resist the urge of putting cold water into your very hot pan because you risk cracking the cast iron or damaging your pan. So just use a minimal amount of water, just dampen your scrub brush and scrub at it. But I find it's easier to get the food bits off when your pan is hot. Once you get all the bits off, then we're going to take a clean rag or paper towel, wipe the inside out, place it back onto a burner on medium heat, raise up the temperature, use a little bit of oil. I like using safflower oil or peanut oil, something that has a pretty high smoking point. And I like using a cotton rag, just a little rag, and just wipe the inside. After I've applied the oil, I just turn off the heat and just allow the pan to cool. So I do this every time I'm finished cooking. So this is my Lodge American Made 10 inch cast iron pan, skillet actually, and this is a replacement. It replaced my antique Wagner, which was passed down to me, which I loved. It had the most beautiful, smooth, glassy finish on the inside because it was nice and old, but it was lost on a camping trip. I hope it's found a good home and is cooking some good pancakes for people because I love that pan. At any rate, this is my replacement, and I found this in a junk shop, and I restored it. So let me walk you through the steps of restoring it. There it is. Not too bad. A little bit of spot rusting here. But as you can see, the surface is not very smooth because it's not very old. I saw this on another YouTube video. I'll put their link in the description. And it's an Avanti Pro Quick Strip Disc. Very rough. I'm going to use a drill and polish this down. And then I'm going to re-season it. And the whole reason being, if you have a nice smooth surface, it's more likely to be nice and non-stick. So if you're going to do this, make sure you're wearing ear protection and a mask, because it's going to kick up a lot of dust. All right, here we go. looks like. So as you can see a lot smoother than it was. A little bit of pitting but nothing I'm too concerned about. So now I'm gonna give this a wash and season it. So here's the pan after one seasoning. I placed it in an oven at 350 degrees and let it sit in there for 10 minutes or so till it's nice and hot. Even longer is better. And you can see it's developing its seasoning right there. See that little bit of brownness? I'll season this a few times. So now that it's hot again, I'll pull some olive oil and take a paper towel and wipe out the excess. Make sure you get the sides and the outside as well. And then I'll put it back in the oven. Cook it in there for I don't know, half an hour? The reason why cast iron is called cast iron is because it's casted, and it's casted in sand. So in a bed of sand that's been compacted, a mold is pressed into there, and then another mold is pressed on top, and then the liquid iron is poured in between the layers of sand. 
and then once the metal has set, the sand is just removed and you're left with the pan. If you look at the bottom of the pan or on the sides, you'll see that it has kind of a rough or pitted surface, and that is created by the fine texture of the sand. And that's fine, but a really well used vintage pan will have a really gorgeous, smooth surface because of all the scraping and cooking that's been done on it. So that smooth surface, when it's properly seasoned, has more of a non-stick slick finish. I ground mine down for quite a while, and it's much, much smoother than it was, certainly. But what that grinding did was brought the surface down to the metal, which was kind of shiny. So I needed to re-season it. So I washed it many, many times because there's lots of iron filings everywhere. And then I began the process of seasoning it. Now it took many, many, many times for it to get this gorgeous black color again. So I have this size. This is the standard 10 inch. And this is a great big one. This is my 12 inch one. Then I have this one, which you've all seen. This is my handy dandy griddle. I love this. I use this one a lot when I'm filming because it doesn't have any sides. So you guys can see what I'm doing. And it's very easy to flip because the sides don't get in the way because there are no sides. And finally, I have this. And this is my beloved Dutch oven. I love braising in it. It's just wonderful. It retains heat and creates a really nice caramelized roast. And this is a five quart Dutch oven. I love cooking with cast iron for many reasons. Number one, it is very, very durable. These pans will last you a lifetime. In fact, they're often passed down. They are so strong. It is inexpensive. A pan like this will cost you less than $20. And like I said, it will last generations. Another reason why I like cast iron is that it retains its heat very, very well. So once you get it up to temperature, when you put a cold steak or even cold food into a pan, it still remains really searingly hot and you get nice browning and searing on your food. But there are things that I don't like about cast iron. Number one, it is quite heavy. It is iron after all. <laughs> but it is induction friendly. So if you have an induction burner, this will work because of course it contains iron. It also works really well if you are camping. So it's very versatile in that fact. You can just put it right on your camp stove or actually on the coals. That's how they did it back in the chuck wagon days. So very strong as well. That was going back to the pros, but back to cons. Any other con things that I don't like about? Another con is sometimes when you're cooking acidic food, say like a tomato sauce or something like that, it will remove some of the seasoning if your seasoning is particularly thin and it can react a little bit with the metal and create a little bit of a metallic taste. But if you have a very well seasoned pan, I haven't had any trouble with that. So I do cook tomato sauces, meatballs in my cast iron as well. But if you're at all concerned about that, you can use cast iron enamel, something like this. Um, and this is enameled or painted cast iron, and you still get the benefits of the heat retention of the cast iron, but you don't have the exposure of the metal to the acidic environments, and you don't have to season it because it's painted. So for me, the pros definitely outweigh the cons when it comes to cast iron. So that's it when it comes to cast iron. There's not a whole lot to it. You just gotta make sure you season it properly and take care of it. And once you get a really good season on it, you really only have to season it every other time or every few times because the seasoning is really imparted into the metal at that point. So if you're at all interested in cast iron, I encourage you to try it out. The investment is relatively small, and in terms of care, it's not that much work. It's just a matter of making it part of your daily ritual when it comes to using your cast iron. Yeah, what else to say about cast iron? It's really good for your arms and forearms, too. You get some strength and muscles, and you can pretend you're like on your chuck wagon days. You just need, you know, your flour sack towels. All right, enough of that. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something and I shall see you in my next video. Oh, be sure to share this video, subscribe so you can get more of this great content and follow me on social media so you know we can stay in touch and be friendly and stuff. All right, toodaloo, take care, bye.